cursed. Lack of supports. Lack of money. Lack of money. Starvation. Uselessness. Barren. Help. If you were to define poverty in one word, what word would you use? What is to define poverty in one word? Avoidable. Avoidable. Um, I know that doesn't really define poverty at all, but I feel like poverty is something that could be avoided yes. if we provide a support system for our citizens, for our new immigrants, for people that are suffering with mental health, for people that are suffering with substance abuse issues, then they won't have to live in a life of poverty. On Friday, April 5, 2013, a group of grade 12 World Issue students from Bill Crother Secondary School in Unionville, Ontario, who were assigned with the task of creating a documentary answering the question, is poverty a serious problem in Toronto, took a trip to the city to find an answer. The following is a record of what they found. This is not a yes or no question. Yeah, you cannot just say this or that. If you want to take a look at poverty first, you should start from all around the world. Globalization, then come to the country, then go to the province and to the city. So as long as we have three level corrupted government in this society, certainly poverty gonna show more and more. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. So can I Living like on the streets, what's like your daily routine, you say? Uh, I go to school. Uh, I go to George Brown. Uh, I'm an advocate uh, at uh, street, uh, street Health. Yeah, we sit here, uh, we come up with ideas to get change. Play music. Yeah. Well, I have a lot of medical problems. Yeah, I got a lot of doctors to see and all that. But uh, I usually go out, I try to make a few dollars for some means. I stay at a friend's place. They're supposed to get in me a place soon. I hope it's soon anyway, but uh, that's what's going on right now. Do you feel that you get enough like food and water on, on a daily? I, I go out and make my own, sir. It's available, yes. Available? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can probably eat like six meals a day by going to like different... Uh, uh, well, I usually like restaurant stuff, Tim Hortons and McDonald's and all that. On average, how many homeless people do you see every day? And sure. Do you see Fifteen. Nah, uh, I'd say more like ten, and always in the downtown core. I'd say about fifteen to thirty, mostly at work. How long have you been around poverty for? Uh, a lot of years. And I live, I had a place from when I was like 17 to I had a job and stuff until I was like 20. Well, actually, I, I wasn't even homeless until where I come from, so I gone. And then, like, because I had a job and stuff, but I don't know, I just hated it. And I lived there for my entire life, so I decided to just hitchhike out of there. <laughs> See what's right. Yeah. You guys know each other before you came down here? Yeah, we're from the same hometown, but yeah. I just come from out west and you came from east and we just met up. So. Um, um, I've been on the streets for about 10 years, but that's given me yeah. enlightenment to people's causes and made me more empathetic and realize where the hurdles are. What do you think the reasons are for people to like live in poverty and live on the streets? Yeah. Uh, I guess like also by the influence of people giving them money, like it doesn't really push them to try to find a job. People kind of like they get support from government, so people aren't motivated to go find occupation. Where like, um, yeah, just I guess spoiling from the public. Then. I don't know. It's hard to say. I think a lot of the homeless people I see are probably alcoholics. Um, I don't know. A lot of times they ask for coffee or something. 
What would you say like the biggest like the misconception is like what do you think that people don't know about being poor? Uh, I just think a lot that people don't know that a lot of people think it's like your fault a lot of time, but a lot of times it's just like parents end up on drugs and then they end up in foster care and by the time they're sixteen they leave the foster care. I just think a lot of people don't realize that you really don't need a job to work. You can be self-employed, like I play music and I have a friend who paints, you know, so it's like, yeah. you really don't need a job to work, a job is just something that they put out there for you to get by. It's like the easiest route in life, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's there for the easy one. That's the way I see it. I'd rather do it myself. I don't even get welfare, because I'd just rather do it myself. It's fun. What do you think the, one of the main reasons that people end up on the street? Oh, yeah. So then it's lack of support, so yeah. I think people, um, yeah, like, usually what happens is people have an emergency situation that leads them to life on the streets, mm -hmm. but those emergency situations, in my opinion, could be avoided if their families were supporting them or if their communities were supporting them. Okay. What do you think the biggest misconception about poverty is? It can't happen to you. According to The Economist magazine, Toronto is ranked the fourth most livable place in the world. Do you agree with the statement that Toronto is one of the most livable places? Yes, I do. It's clean, it's safe. It's not like New York City or Detroit or LA. I think it's still one of the safest city in the world. Do you think that's true? I think it's true. Taking into taking everything into consideration? Yes. Yeah, I think so. I would, yeah, I would agree. In terms of poverty, everything, all the yeah. services? Yeah. Well, you have to compare it to the rest of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Notwithstanding the high cost of living. I, I guess like what doesn't make it livable is just the prices with like living in apartments and stuff because it is pricey so I guess for like individuals who want to live by themselves it's not really sustainable. According to the Toronto Community Foundation, overall price for consumer goods and services has increased by 20%. Have these increases in consumer goods affected you in any way? Yes, they have. Uh, they've affected me is because my dollar isn't going as far as I expected it to. Have these increases affected you? Anyway. Not significantly. <laughs> okay. Like, what would you say the hardest part about living in poverty? Uh, not being able to shower every day, I guess. And the crazy people you see out here. Take it down to like, okay, if you're Paris Hilton and you don't know who your friends are because you're so rich, okay? If you're really good on the street, you don't know who your friends are because you're so crafty. <laughs> you know? So, or you're being, you know, used or whatever. Yeah. Some days are worse than others, you know? Sometimes you really just want to buy something to eat, but everyone thinks you just want to buy crack or whatever. You know? it's like, some people are very stereotypical, that's for sure. It's like, do you think the city of Toronto is doing a good job in supporting low-income families? No. Why? Because I don't know about any initiatives to support low-income families. That's not true. Cam H. Okay, Cam well. H there. They have a lot of houses and stuff. Okay. So they're doing an okay job. Not, I think they do their best. Like, I don't know if they do, like, enough, but I think they do their best. No. They could do a lot more. What do you think they can do um, to better help low-income families? Provide them with better education to get a better job. Uh, government subsidies, they can help. Just put our money into the people that can generate money back into the city. For no reason we have to spend billion of billion of dollars for F-35, which Mr. Mr. Harper preferred to buy that and not take care of, take good care of the Canadian who they lost their job or when they are preferring to spend billion of billion of dollars for the Afghanistan war mm -hmm. and not building the affordable housing or creating job in this society. Briefly, can you describe uh, what homeless shelters in general are doing to help? So this is a transitional housing program, okay. so yep. people stay here up to 11 months, so it's a bit different, but I would guess that Salvation Army homeless shelters are just about getting people off the streets okay. and giving people an emergency place to stay uh, while they try to find more permanent housing. What are your thoughts on like the living shelters in Toronto? Uh, um, <laughs> I don't like shelters, that's why I don't go to them, I'd rather sleep outside. Why don't you like them? Because I think it's an organization of thieves. 
Oh, he shot this dog out of dogs. They're all out of dogs? No, not in shelters usually. I think there's one in Toronto, but it's far away or something. You know Doctors Without Borders? Yeah. Shelter workers should have, uh, should be like uh, in a subservient job before they work at shelters. So a lot of people just go from the high school to the college to being a, a, a shelter worker and they have no experience or they don't know empathetically what to do. Do you think it's a myth or misconception that the majority of homeless shelters in Toronto are dirty and unsanitary? Okay. I think it's a myth. Do you think people who are not living in poverty are aware of the severity of disparity and homelessness in Toronto? I don't think so. I think we, and it's different too because I think we, when we think of poverty or we think of homelessness, we think of people living in sleeping bags on the streets or the homeless shelters. There's a lot of hidden poverty, in my view, in the city, and so I think people are fairly unaware of that. I'm actually not sure what homeless shelters are. Like, I know they, like, sometimes if it's really cold out, they'll open, like, public places for them to stay at. But, yeah, I don't hear too much about public shelters. Do you think they realize the severity of poverty, but are just too apathetic to act to try and make a difference? It's hard to know. In my life, in my experience with Salvation Army, I've seen both. I've seen a lot of apathy, but I've also seen a lot of people who do care, and when they have um, when they know of what they can do specifically, they do help. So oh. I think there's a lot of good intentions and a lot of good ideas. Sometimes people just don't know what to do. How do you think, as a society, we can help to decrease the amount of poverty? Too much fun as I took some I don't know. I guess like lower the standards. People like people who want to get primary level jobs shouldn't have to have too much education. So like dishwashing, people want like a high school degree, but really you don't really need education. I'd say give more money to them, but uh, where's the yeah, money coming from? Exactly. Right we take away from education. Or yeah. We need government assistance here. So I think there's a lot of different things. One is your standard, like giving money to great organizations like Salvation Army. Yeah. Um, but I think there's also something to be said for just including people in our lives. Um, so. Again, it's around that support piece, so um, just not being able to be apathetic and ignoring people, but including people, getting to know them, talking with people, and just including them in our lives. A lot of it is red tape, and a lot of it is, um, <laughs> you know, like uh, just people getting their uh, theirs, but not considering other people, you know? And uh, you take away the clothing and the rings and the bling and everything, we're just our souls talking, okay? And a lot of souls need help. One more question. Could you define poverty in just one word? Just in one. one word. Rich. Rich? Uh, well, Jesus was poor, right? <laughs>